Toshi-san. Hi. Thank you very much for allowing me to interview you. It's always nice to talk to you. Big welcome to Omi office. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Thanks for your time. Thank you. And actually, I'm catching you at a very delicate time. Mm. Uh, The coronavirus is all over the place. Yes. Uh, Places are shut down. Mm. Many people lost their job. Mm. So this is a very, very, very uh, delicate situation, Mm. kind of unstable. Yes. Also for our industry. But I want to start from a point of view of when everything is finished and we are back to kind of normality. Mm -hmm. How would you see the industry then? Do you think that things will go back to normality or we are kind of Mm. this industry changed forever? Uh, Johnny, before I start answering you, I like to say I'm very sorry for the loss uh, for the people who passed away uh, by COVID-19. And uh, I do hope as a quick recovery for the other patient uh, who is suffering. And uh, I also feel sorry to all the, the photographers and the videographers in church. They may have uh, lost some business uh, because of the situation. yeah, situations. So oh, I'm really sorry for all of them. And uh, the yes, uh, uh, many global events are now postponed or the cancelled. And uh, such as uh, uh, Olympic game uh, recently, uh, it must have a uh, huge impact on the, all the imaging industry. Uh, at this moment, uh, uh, I can't predict. I cannot say it's short term or uh, the longer term, but uh, I'm totally to believe at some point that so all the people will go back to normal. But uh, I cannot think how quickly or how long at this moment. And as a, as a manufacturer, uh, as a head of the division, the hmm. uh, do you have, are you, are you making any certain plans like plan A, plan B, or, or are you actually monitoring the situation every day just to see how things are developing? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, of course, you know, uh, that's the COVID-19 that affecting uh, my, my business uh, in the many ways. The first, uh, we started uh, getting impact at the uh, China factory, right, uh, for manufacturing and uh, the procuring the, the components. That happened uh, uh, probably in February, early February. Uh, then we start uh, seeing the impact on the actual the demand for the camera and so on. So uh, it's too early to say uh, do we, I do whether I need plan B or plan C. Uh, but you know, at the moment, I'm just uh, uh, focusing the same way uh, we did uh, to keep our product development. This situation actually. It's, it's really the worst time for the industry in general because mm-hmm. we know that um, sales were down, mm-hmm. the competition is extremely stiff. Mm-hmm. And um, you as a manufacturer, together with other Japanese manufacturers, are you discussing the situation? Are, do you have any, are you trying to get united, do something together in order to improve the situation or come up with certain solutions, especially now? Mm. I'm not sure, you know, the how uh, the manufacturers can be united or work together. Um, is there any way uh, we can uh, do such a thing? Uh, at the moment, I don't know, but uh, I do believe all individual the companies, including the Fujifilm, uh, they're working hard to overcome the situation by their own efforts. So you mentioned just before that obviously there's some uh, impact on manufacturing in China. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, when you say impact, what type of impact are you describing? Uh, is it a shortage in, in, in components or it's a lack of manpower? Yeah, uh, the boss. Uh, lack of the labors, uh, lack of components. So uh, our factory been told, was told by government 
first to extend the Chinese New Year holiday, and uh, instead of the third of February uh, till tenth uh, of February, so uh, we had to extend it uh, the closure time, and uh, we I just uh, uh, really worried about uh, uh, that point because at uh, that point we really uh, we were supposed to start some uh, production for XT4. But uh, luckily enough, our factories uh, went back to normal uh, as soon as uh, the government allowed us to start 10th of February. So uh, then, you know, at the beginning, of course, you know, some restriction because of the uh, labor's the three shortage, component shortage. But you know, they quickly catched up, caught up. So uh, at the moment, I have no worry about the manufacturing side. Early samples of the camera were actually made in Japan, and some were made in China. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was that were only the samples made in Japan. I mean, why why the decision to take the the production out of out of Japan? Uh, for in terms of XT4, uh, our uh, we haven't changed the, our plan uh, from the beginning. Uh, we set up the uh, uh, the capacity, production capacity XT4 uh, just in China, China factory, because. Uh, uh, we see you know, such a big demand in order to, to, to meet such a big demand. I think that China is the best place mm -hmm. to manufacture. Some of the questions, of course, I have to tie it up to the, to the situation. Mm -hmm. And let's say that you are able to manufacture the amount that you want. But then there are other obstacles in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, big vendors are actually either closed or of course, they try to sell online, mm -hmm. but there are some other restrictions. You know, sometimes the uh, you can't even send the cameras to the customers or or whatever. And on top, and this is maybe the the, the hardest mm -hmm. part, mm -hmm. maybe people lost some enthusiasm to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. Not because they don't want to. It's literally if you lose a job, you have less money, mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. do uh, your priorities are completely different. Sure, sure. How do you navigate as a manufacturer who just introduced a new camera to the market? Mm -hmm. uh, very capable one. Mm -hmm. it looks very, you know, it has the potential to be very popular. But mm -hmm. how do how do you navigate in these circumstances? Uh, of course, you know, oh, we should be worried about uh, you know the, uh, the actual demand being also affected uh, by this uh, you know situation. Uh, however, uh, we already started to uh, collecting uh, uh, pre-orders uh, from customers. I think it's uh, uh, the initial, the, you know, the pre-order is quite, quite strong. So I think the customer is still waiting uh, to buy, to have the, you know, the good product. Uh, of course, you know, the, we have uh, some restrictions in terms of logistics. For example, the warehouse, it's not, you know, 100% you know, operational. And uh, the shops are closure, closed, but you know the the people still want to buy the XT4, uh, even buy online. So, so you haven't really noticed a drop in like like cancellations of orders. You haven't noticed this yet. That's not the message that you get from some vendors. Mm, so as uh, as long as the XT4 is concerned, uh, we don't see uh, you know uh, such a situation. Your managing style has changed. I mean, your people are still working from the office, uh, am I right? Fujifilm didn't ask the people to work from home. Yes, uh, we gradually, you know, uh, you know uh, recommending uh, the staff uh, work from home. Uh, but uh, maybe, you know, I need to uh, adjust, uh, you know, uh, my management style the slightly, but, you know, majority of my managing style should be changed. I really like to, you know, I still focus on the, the speed and the focusing on the product innovations. Uh, otherwise, you know, as a manufacturer, there's no point. So I still really focus on, you know, the uh, same pace of the product development. Let's talk a little bit about the XT4. Mm -hmm. Seems like the product was developed in a very short time. I think the XT3 was in the market for a bit uh, over a year. Uh, no, quite slightly longer. It's about uh, one and a half year, I think. One and a half years. Mm. This is a bit faster than normal, am I right? Sure. 
why was that? What, what, what did you feel? Because mm -hmm. the X-T3 was a good camera. Mm -hmm. And obviously you felt that something is missing. And mm -hmm. I guess you, you kind of ask your people to, to devote more time and, and come up with the X-T4. Mm. Immediately after our interview, we launched X-T3. We started getting the, such a positive feedback, uh, especially for uh, the speed and especially for the, the video uh, quality. So we are very proud of that. But at the same time, we immediately start, start getting uh, uh, the request, uh, especially for IBIS or bigger battery. So we thought, you know, maybe we should respond to the, you know, the customers, uh, the needs and the request as quickly as possible. And uh, as a sensor and the processor, we already uh, established. So it's a matter of the time is uh, how quickly we can develop the new IBIS unit. Uh, I happen to have here. Uh, this is a small IBIS unit. Uh, previously, we had a uh, uh, IBIS unit for XH1. So XH1 was a, a little bit the, the big heavy cameras. Uh, but uh, during that, that, that time, you know, our R&D team learned a lot the how to make a small IBIS unit. Uh, it is a uh, 20%. Uh, yes, sure. 20%, 30% uh, smaller and lighter. Yeah. So this IBIS unit, together with, to make this IBIS unit, uh, we also developed a, a new shutter unit, mechanical shutter unit, right? And also, you know, uh, we developed a new uh, long life, longer life, the batteries. Uh, so those three, which we, we had uh, those three key components, we thought uh, we satisfy the customer demand almost, almost hundred percent. So uh, our passion was, you know, to create to make the XT3 even better. So uh, that was, you know, uh, we've done uh, in uh, eighteen months. Will, will you continue to um, sell the XT3? By the way. Oh yes, yes, yes. Probably at uh, some uh, price gap. Yes, XT3 is the three, you know, uh, the good cameras. And uh, uh, it is a, the serial you know, uh, we recommend the customers. Some customers buy XT3, uh, much more affordable price point than the XT4 alongside. So if, I, if we have to summarize, because you said you already had the, the sensor and the board mm -hmm. uh, for it to, to support the sensor, what was the most challenging part in the development of the XT4? Uh, I think IBIS unit, yes. Uh, how to make uh, uh, this small IBIS unit without compromising the uh, performance or even you know, improving the uh, performance. So uh, this IBIS unit can work for up to 6.5 stop uh, compared to the 5.5 previously. So it is a stronger, more stable IBIS unit than before, even for the small package. And uh, to make this, again, I say that this shutter unit is also, this is more durable, uh, much, more, much more powerful, and uh, at the same time, it's smaller. We also have on the table the GFX100, yes. which is, of course, a medium format camera. Hmm. And the video capabilities, it's very nice uh, in, in, in terms of uh, quality, but mm -hmm. of course this is a rather expensive camera, and mm -hmm. this is uh, first and foremost uh, a photographer's camera. Yes. And you declared in a very clear, open way mm -hmm. that medium format is the full frame format for you. Uh, yes, yes. The only thing is that full frame cameras mm -hmm. are kind of dropping in price, mm -hmm. and they are doing quite a good job. Do you think in the future you are able actually to also bring the price down of mm -hmm. the medium format and uh, accommodate the needs of filmmakers with something which is a bit more cost effective that can compete also price wise mm -hmm. with full frame uh, mm -hmm. cameras? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we fully really aware uh, uh, what uh, monitoring the uh, competitions, and uh, we already started doing uh, uh, a GFX 50R at a very very attractive price point already and. Uh, but uh, uh, the response is great. So uh, it's always our ambition to make a GFX 
mainstream product. To make a GFX mainstream product, we need to continue our efforts to make it more affordable and uh, probably smaller and lighter. So this is the one way we're focusing on. I, I'll try to take from your, uh, from your answer mm. that uh, you always cook something. You always cook another product that hopefully will be a bit more capable <laughs> and, and a bit more affordable. Yeah, right? I, say, yeah, yeah. I cannot you know, the, say you know, the exactly, but you know, this is, I just say, uh, my ambition yeah, to make a GFX mainstream product. Okay. When it comes to video functionality, mm. obviously it became a very, very important feature uh, to you and, and to Fujifilm in general. The thing is that uh, current cameras in general, they're quite good. And personally, I think and I feel that maybe adding features or new features is simply not enough anymore to capture the attention of the user. Mm. Maybe sometimes a completely new concept has mm. to be thought about. Mm. What is your opinion? Are you doing anything in this direction? Is there anything that you can share with the audience? Uh, Johnny, you know that uh, we are uh, quite late comer to the, you know, the movie or the, the cinema camera. I think that uh, we, our journey just started with uh, X-T3, I say. Uh, but, you know, we uh, quickly, you know, the learning and uh, the catching up and uh, this X-T4 really uh, get, uh, uh, get to the even higher level. So our journey will never end. So uh, we are listening and we're learning more uh, what uh, the filmmakers, uh, videographers, what features, what design, what usability, what accessory should be compatible. Uh, we are always uh, looking for the next step. Toshi-san, so you are obviously pushing forward with the video capabilities of, of the cameras. Mm -hmm. How about the lenses? Because you had the nice MK lenses, mm -hmm. which is good for Super 35, yes. but obviously you have um, uh, medium format cameras mm -hmm. and other manufacturers are moving to full frame. Mm -hmm. Anything that you can share with us about future plans? As a latecomer, we, we thought the hard uh, how we differentiate ourselves from the, you know, the competition that is already crowded in a already crowded market, uh, we turned out find what customer expecting from us. It is uh, the lens and uh, color reproduction. So uh, with the lens, we had, you know, um, actually, you know, we are uh, in charge of the very broad variety of lenses, including the very big broadcasting lens, uh, cine zoom lens, and uh, based on that kind of, you know, very high spec professional the lens, we can copy that technology to more uh, mainstream the lenses. Uh, MK, thanks for you mentioning, uh, that is one example. And uh, even for the GF lens and the XF lens, that's the interchangeable lenses, uh, we can, you know, introduce that core technology uh, to make, you know, the good uh, video capable the lenses. I think that we really like to expand, uh, invest for the lens and the, the colors for the videos as well. Out of curiosity, because again, you talked about uh, finding the unique point mm -hmm. and to do things maybe a little bit different. Anamorphic lenses are becoming extremely popular mm -hmm. because everybody wants identity mm -hmm. when they film. Mm -hmm. They don't want that everything they do will look like others. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that it's either very, very expensive, mm -hmm. and if it's not expensive, maybe there's a lack of identity to the lens itself, mm -hmm. to, to the footage coming uh, after filming with the lens. Anything, uh, you know, do, do you sometimes dream at night about anamorphic lenses? Mm, we, we, yeah, we do have, you know, uh, lots of the request uh, about such a lens. Uh, however, we just introduced uh, two uh, cine zoom lens, uh, called the Premista, which is a, a large format, the cine zoom lens. Uh, the market reaction is very, very positive. And uh, we really like to, you know, uh, focus on our current project uh, before we 
uh, looking at the uh, analog footprints. Mm. Maybe in the future, but at the moment we are quite busy for current project. Toshi-san, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's thank always you, a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Guys, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.